very good morning to everyone thank you so much for joining this call to begin with the earning calls would like to share two numbers with you as a summary towards my q2 and the h1 results we'll start with the operational highlights of the company wherein you know we'll deep dive you know what has actually happened in this quarter in terms of you know aum we we are standing at an aum 1771 cr right business of the company has gone up as far as q1 as uh, is concerned we have done a business of 201 cr whereas in q2 we have been able to do, uh, to do 328 cr the company uh, has a total business size uh, to total uh, total uh, uh, clients which has been you know acquired by the con uh, acquired by the company in this quarter stands at 39093 which makes our total life base of the clients at 392747 the the company has been you know uh, successfully able to take the balance sheet size of the company at 2244 crores the borrowings of the company stands at 1586 crores whereas the which which has a uh, which has a total average cost of funds at 9.80% the biggest topic uh, of this company you know wherein which we which we were facing for the last 18 odd months wherein the gnp of the company was extremely high we we started at march 2022 uh, march 2022 with a gnp of 25 watt percent now we are standing at a gnp of 11.61% uh, sorry 11.67% including the interest accrual and 10.81% excluding the interest whereas the nnp of the company uh, stands at 3.88% which includes the interest on nnp also which we have shown uh, which which we have shown uh, on the higher side whereas if we exclude that interest the nnp is stands at 2.94% this has been done because of one arc transaction of 235 crores which uh, which the organization has done in q2 the company has run this arc transaction with phoenix at a valuation of 50% the overall pack of the company uh for h1 stands at 101 cr which remarks a very remarkable growth of 210% is uh, as compared to year on year the uh, the return on asset stands at 17.17% again you know uh, making a significant growth of 391% as compared to year on year uh the gnp and nnp which we have already spoke the company is having a very healthy crar of 35.41% as we speak with debt to equity of 2.69 times only the company have been able to successfully able to give eps of 50.59 rupees whereas return on equity stands at 60.59% the company has generally operated at an ltv of 80.56% during the quarter the the uh, growth uh, in the aum as we have seen you know if the the business number has increased in q2 because of uh, because of one arc which the company has been done the uh, which uh, the uh, we can see a portfolio has been derecognized from the book in the q2 itself that's the reason we are having a lower aum but that that is something you know which we have already planned for in q2 itself the company is having a pcr rao at 75% which is still higher as we as we compare to the industry our peers are uh, our, our peers are operating at 60% but we have taken a conscious call to keep uh, to keep the pcr of as high as 75% earlier we used to operate with a pcr of 85% there has been a significant growth uh, if we compare to the q1 if we compare to the q2 of the last financial year in terms of roa 3.5 uh, 3.5% has become 17.2% and in terms of roe uh, 17.8 has become you know 60.66% for uh, for this quarter the eps as i said you know stands at 50.6 uh, rupee which we, if we compare it with the q2 of the last financial year it stood at 11.1 rupee the net on funds uh, which you know when when we started this uh, this financial year we are having a loan funds of 489.30 crores which are now which are now standing at 590.40 crores the company you know has been able to successfully uh, manage their nps where and you know at the start of the year we were having an npa of 4435 crores at q2 ending we were having an npa of 424 crores 
you know after recovery or after having a pools so sold out of 235 crore uh, the company is having an npa of gnp of 194.44 crore as an absolute figure the in terms uh, if it, uh, if we talk about you know partnerships which i already said in the q1 of this financial year the company has been able to successfully able to you know uh, sail uh, sail through with the partnership in this quarter as well uh, the total outstanding for all the partnership uh, that the organization is having in terms of co-lending around we are having an outstanding of 333.58 crores out of that we record that there is there is not even a single case which is npa which is a very good sign in terms of partnership of uh, partnerships of the company La liability front as i told you know the company is having uh, the company has been successfully able to roll over all its working capital demand loan in this quarter as, as well whereas you know we are also attracting the new facilities while attracting the new uh, new facilities you know what we have done is the incremental funding which the organization has raised in the q2 of this financial year we have been able to see a decline in the overall funding cost of the company by uh, by 0.10% if it if it uh, if we talk about the mix of the funding which the organization is having obviously at out of 1570.63 cr of funding the bank loan uh, plays a very important role wherein you know we are having approximately 962 crores of funding from uh, from them whereas in terms of uh, in terms of you know the securitization though the company has not done any securitization in this financial year as well due to the fact that you know we have done the securitization in the last financial year the outstanding remains a very significant of approximately 264 crores whereas you know a combination of mlds and ncds that we have raised in the last financial year and some portion that we have raised in the q1 it's uh, it so that approximately 250 crores in this quarter what we have done uh, you know exceptional you know that i'll say apart from the arc is we have made our fixed deposit rate you know competitive uh, competitive in our state we have compared those rates with all the nbfc then the banks which are operating here basis on that we have increased the rate and you know we have been able to attract fund uh, from you know fds also and uh, plan uh, plan you know in uh, in q3 in q3 and in q4 itself is basically to uh, to to get more and more funding from the fds so that we can have a significant uh, impact on the overall cost of funds of the company the uh, the as far as the total you know uh, ecl is concerned of the company you know the company is maintaining a significant ecl you know as compared to the irac norm which has been you know prescribed by the rbi which is a very very good good sign in terms of the overall for portfolio of the company we are still you know 25 crores higher than you know as prescribed by the irac norms of the rbi these are the these are the you know financial uh, financial you know feet which i which i which i wanted to share before i would like to share uh, before i would like to hand over this call to our ceo to give you more insights on the business of the companies uh, the business business of the company in the q2 and the h1 and how the business will grow in q3 and the q4 as well over to you mathis sir hi thank you ravandeep and uh, uh, good morning everyone i hope i am audible yes sir yeah okay so uh, once again good morning everyone and as uh, our uh, uh, cfo raman has already uh, put up very very uh, clearly that our business numbers mm, jumped almost uh, uh, by from 200 crores in the q1 to 330 crores in q2 and uh, we have uh, uh, you know very favorable tailwinds going into q3 with the festive season so uh, we are already looking at uh, closing at close to our q1 numbers this month itself the month of uh, october and november uh, is expected to be much better because of diwali happening across the country so i think q3 we should close somewhere close to uh, 600 crores of business time and uh, of course so we will uh, have uh, maintain the momentum so now our team is also in place in most of the markets we've uh, finalized very very good partnerships which as raman had pointed out is doing very very healthy business for us with zero npa uh some of the uh, things that we are going to do in the quarters to come is going to uh, you know uh, change the face of our 
organization per se so we are uh, creating four different sbus under our uh, company so two wheeler will become an sbu uh, used car will become an sbu uh, lcv will become an sbu and uh, digital sales and retail liability will become an sbu it's independent teams of sales credit collections everything within each of these verticals now we have a common uh, sales credit collection for most of these because the volumes were low but in q2 we uh, started doing very well on used car we hired our entire team across so uh, maybe by the end of q4 we will have all the four uh, sbus working independently because we want to scale up business on each of these four lines uh, that is going to be really a game changer for our organization in terms of growth of business growth of au and as raman already pointed out after a arc transaction our book is looking very healthy now uh, so that is going to uh, help us very uh, strongly when we go to bankers and, and in fact we already started seeing results of that in terms of reduction in our cost cost of funds uh, q3 q4 are going to be really exciting for us Uh, also our uh, flagship company which is mutur fincorp till now we were uh, working with them on a uh, dsa kind of an arrangement where uh, they were doing business like any other dealer or dsa with us and we would um, share some commission to them based on uh, the market standards and based on our uh, arms length distance that we need to maintain for our group company but we are now getting into a new model with uh, mutur fincorp This is a BC model where they will also be engaged in collection for us. Uh, for us, so that will be kind of a they will do through the entire life cycle of the loan they will service. That is right from start, sourcing to collection to issuance of NOC, foreclosure, and everything. And that model will bring a lot of uh, benefits for both our companies. One because the branches will have a significant share of. uh income going up due to this tie up and even their interest in this whole business will go up so whole objective of this is that uh, uh there are uh, in the past we have done larger numbers from there but since the branches have now uh, diversified into multiple products they have somewhere lost the focus this is going to bring back the focus and we are expecting mfl business itself to contribute about 5000 6000 numbers for to our overall volume per month i think we are looking at very very exciting times ahead and we are really confident of the next two quarters and the next year as we see it uh thanks uh, over to you raman shweta yeah. we can go for questions now thank you very much we will now begin the question and answer session anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touch tone telephone if you wish to remove yourself from the question queue you may press star and two participants are requested to only use handsets while asking a question the first question is from the line of yash agarwal from jm financial please go ahead yeah so good morning uh, i have a few questions my first question is you know the numbers excluding this exceptional item that is the ride back uh seem slightly poor because the pat run rate is down from 24 25 crore to 16 crore and even the roa run rate is uh, you know excluding the right back is about 2.2% so where do you see this uh, firstly the number settling uh, in the next few quarters and obviously for the full year of fy 25 uh, my second question is uh, the yield on advances has declined from about 19.5% to 16.7% so Uh, firstly what is the reason for this decline because uh, the interest rates uh, you know everywhere are going up even your cost of funds are going up uh, what is the incremental yield on disbursements that we are uh, doing that's the second question and my third question is uh, we spoke about a 24 2500 crore exit aum by fi24 uh, we are at 1750 1770 crore now uh, so uh, the disbursement run rate of 600 crore that you spoke about in the third quarter would that be sustainable in the fourth quarter and fi25 uh, and what is the revised aum guidance for fi24 and fi25 so these are my three questions to you yeah so i'll take it 
First of all, yes, thank you so much for asking this question on the ex- exceptional item. I'm very happy, you know, someone has asked, you know, as, as the professor's question itself. See, yes, what happened is, exceptional items are the items which NDA says that, that you need to show it in the, uh, in the you know, in face of a financial, so that the reader of the financial statement should, should know that, you know, something extraordinary has happened, which organization want to highlight it. Now, if we talk about 16 CR of profits, right, you are comparing it with the last quarter in which we haven't done any ARP. Now, say, suppose, suppose, if I haven't, I have not been able, to, uh, not, not been able to do the ARP, then what would have happened is, the impairment reversal, which you can see in the exceptional item, would have gone up, which means my, you know, uh, then then my pack would be somewhere around, you know, 28 or uh, 28 or uh, or CCR. How? Because you know, now the reversal of impairment has come to this exceptional item, as I have shown. Because on this 235 crore of, of the ARC pool, any any impairment which has happened in the Q2 has also gone into the impairment reversal in the exceptional item itself. Whereas, if we haven't done any sort of ARC, that reversal would have gone up in the normal impairment reversal. So, that's, I, I hope that answers your first question. Sure. And what is the ROA uh, going to look like in the next few quarters, you know? So, in the, yeah, so if we, if we talk about, you know, return on asset in the next two quarters, it would be somewhere, uh, somewhere around in the, uh, in the range of 12 to 50 not percent. The the quarterly other way that you're talking about. The quarterly, quarterly one. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. But so, what is going to be a sustainable run rate? Because you know, excluding all these impairments and all which are done with on the you know the loans which were given possibly pre-COVID or during the first wave of COVID, what is the sustainable yeah. ROA run rate that you are looking at? See, sustainable. See, if we talk about that, you know, in last 18 months, what we are doing is, firstly, we are speaking about you know NPA. Uh, so, NPA of the organization is higher, right? Then, then, then we are taking the steps of, you know, of, uh, of recovering this uh, amount from the, from, from the, from all our clients and all, and we are putting all the effort. Last step was, you know, to, to do the ARC from, from the books. Now, since we have done with all, all sort of things, if we talk about only, if we, if we, if we exclude the impairment from, uh, from us of financial, our ROA would be somewhere around, you know, seven to eight percent. That's what, you know, we are thinking. That's our, uh, our, you know, Match sales. Okay. Right? And the so, second thing is, uh, yeah. yeah. Second oh, sorry, thing is, you ahead, talk sir. about, yeah, yeah, sorry. Uh, you talk about this, uh, yield, which is getting dropped. I'll, I'll tell you, you know, what, uh, what's happening is, once see, we have a, we have a portfolio which is a combination of, uh, MCSL own portfolio and the co-lending one. So when you have, when you increase your co-lending as well, so overall yield become an average yield. So whatever business that, that, that we are receiving from the co-lending partners, as I said, it has a zero NPA, right? So because of that, you know, we are receiving some lower yield on that portfolio. That makes my average yield on the lower side. So higher the co-lending partner, higher the business that, that I, I'm doing from the co-lending partner throughout the country, I will be receiving a yield which will be lower with, uh, when I am doing this business from NCSL itself. That's the reason overall yield has got down. Your third question was on the cost of funds. As I said, you know, in Q2 itself, we have seen, uh, we have seen, you know, some drop there and we will be seeing, we'll also see the same drop in Q3 as well. The only thing is, you know, which we have also added, you know, to drop this cost is basically our FDs. As we've increased the rate of fixed deposit, the overall the uh, the overall cost of fixed deposit to uh, to 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 the organization as a whole uh, as a whole will not go more than 9.40 percent on XIRR basis. So again, the funding that that will receive from fixed deposit, you know, will help the organization in bringing down this cost of funds. So I hope these three questions. Now fourth question on the on the AUM. As I said, you know, uh, at the start of the call, we planned this ARC, you know, in Q2 itself. Why? Because of the valuation that we are receiving, you know, uh, and the second thing is that, you know, uh, we wanted to take this call because of the fact that our cost of funds are increasing every quarter. So bankers may not see your NNPA, but yes, they will 100% first, they will start about, you know, your gross NPA is on the higher side, you know, you need to take a call on that. 
so that's the reason you know we wanted to take this call and we have done this call uh, second thing is you know sr has already said you know we are targeting for approximately 500 to 600 cr of business in q3 q3 why it, uh, it will be on the higher side as as sir said you know it would be a festive season around the country and so we are expecting some higher number on a normal uh, routine we are expecting somewhere around you know 450 cr of business per quarter and specifically in q4 as well so if we talk about the revised aum number that that we have computed it would be somewhere around 2200 crores Secondly, you know, and the last thing, you know, since we have done ARC for only 60% of the portfolio, which are uh, which, uh, which, uh, which, uh, which which was my NPA, if we take a call, you know, because we we have done this transaction to attract a lower cost of funds, still we will be asking from TSUs and all. If we take a call in, we we uh, we might take a call in Q4 as well, where you know to uh, to exclude the remaining portfolio from the NPA as well. And to do a fresh round of ARC, so that call has not been, you know, we will not say yes to it as of now. But yes, as and when you know situation will arise, we'll be 100% taking that call as well. So revised guidelines excluding any any ARC would be you know 20 22 to 2300 odd CR uh, as of March 31st would be my aim. And my final number is uh, question would be. Uh, on uh, the current level of OPEX that we have, so I think uh, we are doing 40 crore of quarterly OPEX. So yeah. uh, how much would that increase with the EUM? Because we used to do uh, almost 25, 2600 crore EUM on the current OPEX run rate. Uh, mm -hmm. what, what would the OPEX look like once the book expands uh, further? See, as we speak, if you ask me, you know, uh, as far as OPEX is concerned, OPEX will only amortize. Because we have already built a team to do a business of uh, uh, approximately 2,500 to 3,000 CR a year, right? So OPEX will not increase. That's for sure. And you know, if anything that has to go up in terms of OPEX is basically our, you know, uh, as as you know, as our CEO has said that we are going ahead with the used car as well. So if we have to hire resources for the used car, that that uh, that's the only case which I can see that you know there there will be slight increase in the OPEX. Otherwise, for my two-wheeler business, this, this OPEX will only get amortized over a period of time. And so incrementally, the 600 to 500 crore disbursement, what is the mix between two-wheeler, co-lending and used bike? So, yeah, yeah. So, I'll say, you know, 60% would come from the NCSL itself. That is two-wheeler. Right? Uh -huh, two-wheeler, right. And, you know, remaining would come from the co-lending. If we talk about you know used car, used car will remain you know slow till March because uh, it's uh, it's only four months you know that we can do and it would be somewhere around four to five watt percent of the total portfolio. And what are the yields between the three products that you spoke about? The incremental so yields. Yeah, yeah. If we talk about you know since I have said you know sixty percent would come from NCSL, so we can expect a yield of twenty four point eight six per percent. We would like to maintain the same. From co-lending, I would be expecting a yield of, you know, somewhere around 14 odd uh, per percent. And from the used car, again, you know, 15, 16 odd percent, that, that would be the incremental yield. Okay, sir. Thank you so much for answering all Thank my you. questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hope that exceptional item is clear, right, Yes. Yeah, 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 it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Thank you. The profitability has, has gone up. That's what I wanted to say. Thank you very much. A reminder to all participants, you may press star and want to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Aditi Shrao from Ingrid Asset Management. Please go ahead. Yeah, hello. Am I audible? Yeah, Aditi. Uh, yes, sir, I had a few questions. So, first of all, uh, so why has the uh, repayments, uh, uh, repayment rate has been so high for us so that they completely nullify the new disbursement? So if we see in this quarter, we had 328 crores of disbursement. But if we remove the ARC sale, and uh, even after that, since we have seen the growth, this shows that we had repayments of around 318 crores for a disbursement rate of 328 crores. So why has it been so high? Secondly, there has been a sharp reduction in the number of live customers. So from three, uh, so it has reduced from 4.7 lakhs to 3.9 lakhs. Hmm. So I uh, just wanted to ask a reason for this. 
and okay. uh, one yeah and lastly one question on uh, so there has been no increment in the eum which was brought in by the existing coal and uh, coal lending partners in the last quarter so like even if you see the wheels emi partner they were at 216 crores they are at the same amount even in this quarter so is there so why has there been no increment in the new eum brought in by them sure sure i would like to answer all these three questions first is basically you have spoke about the repayment why repayment is so higher the answer to this is basically since the loan time period of two wheeler is only two years right that's the reason you know the uh, the cases you know which has to be matured right and now uh, we 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 always expect you know 100 cr of repayment every month has to come that's an average re repayment if we if you uh, say second thing is you know if uh, i think you have, you have spoken about you know the, the number of clients has also gone down 78000 has been client uh, say, sorry 78000 clients have been sold to the arc that's the reason you know 4.7 has become 3.9 third thing is basically on the coal lending front wherein you asked about the wheel cmi yes q2 was bit slower for, for them but in q3 you know they have already done you know 40 odd cr of number as we speak so they they, they uh, so they will be doing somewhere around you know, 150 cr of the additional number in this quarter as well Okay, and uh, the new guidance that we are giving of around six hundred uh, crore disbursement. So I just wanted to ask if that is achievable because uh, even in the this quarter we had Onam there and we were already very uh, long about uh, uh, this adding a lot uh, to our EU. But uh, we were able to add three hundred and now we are guiding of almost double uh, that of uh, that of the previous quarter. so would yeah, that yeah. would this be achievable because even in the last year in the same quarter we were able to achieve somewhere around 300 to 400 crores only so uh, do you think so that is achievable last year, last year the... in the same quarter we were raman i will crore. raman i will take that question uh yeah thanks for the question see uh, you are right on the uh, onam part but uh, the fact is that onam in kerala has been one of the lowest in the past i think uh, Uh, near uh, in the past few years that i can think of kerala normally does about 1 lakh vehicles during onam and a normal uh, average is about 70 75000 vehicles onam they kerala did only 50000 vehicles as a whole our market share has gone up but since the market itself did not grow uh, we did not get the growth as expected however diwali and this festive puja and diwali are a pan india phenomenon and not specific to kerala kerala is a very very small part of the overall uh, thing so if about 13 lakh vehicles get sold kerala is 50000 so only that market is where uh, we were banking on for onam but on the contrary for uh, q2 q3 where you had we just had the shahara getting over and we already seen very good numbers this month so we should close at close to 150 crores of disbursement this month uh, october and uh, november we will cross 200 crores uh, easily so that guidance that we are talking about uh, is achievable and uh, on the second part uh, what is the second question uh, the reduction in the number of live customers ha uh, that already raman explained to you no uh, that uh, 70000 or customers were sold to the ERP so but on the incremental business guidance uh, yes we are confident of getting to that number okay so this quarter we will be able to see an increment in the even uh, by the earlier partner as well yes 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 definitely okay got it sir thank you thank you very much before we take the next question a reminder to all the participants that you may press star and 1 to ask a question the next question is from the line of deepak bodar from safaya capital please go ahead hello am i audible yeah deepak yeah hi uh, thank you very much uh, uh, sir for this opportunity so uh, first of all i just wanted to understand i mean uh, if, if i have to look at last 8 9 quarters our uh, eum or advances has been has been has been around 2000 crores i mean plus minus somewhere 50 crores so so i mean what is stopping us from is there any structural problem in the company or or what is stopping us to grow i mean last nine quarters i, I mean the industry still uh, has grown i mean it, it in in the lower single, single digit right i mean what is stopping us to grow okay. 
ओके सो आई विल टेक दैट क्वेश्चन रमन या सो सी एज यू आर अवेयर देर वॉज अ कंप्लीट चेंज इन द मैनेजमेंट एंड फॉर सम टाइम वी वर नॉट ग्रोइंग एट द रिक्वायर्ड इज दैट मार्केट वॉज ग्रोइंग एट बट इफ यू लुक एट सी होल ऑफ लास्ट इयर we were growing at only at a neck and neck pace with our collection so we were dispersing about 100 crores a month and we were collecting about 100 crores a month so the avm had not grown but and that trend continued in the first quarter as well we dispersed 200 crores and we collected around 300 crores but since then we have been able to bump the trend so in q2 uh, was one of the first quarters where we actually dispersed more than we collected but though the volume of was very less this month we will uh, collect a range this quarter we will collect 300 crores but we will disburse close to 600 crores so there is a straight away jump uh, that is going to get added and subsequently going forward we will continue that momentum because now uh, at in q1 our staff productivity was about 4 4.5 uh, units per staff now it has jumped to 8 and q3 we will bring it to close to 12 Uh, so that is a, now we are focusing on the productivity of the staff, and that will obviously lead to uh, this one, the product in, increase in disbursement. The only uh, con, uh, issue earlier was that because of this change in management, and already there was a uh, inertia in the system which uh, has uh, stopped us from growing. But you should look at what is happening from Q2 and beyond, and that is going to be positive for the company. that is point number 1 point number 2 is the fact that all the additional product lines that we are starting so two wheel we have been have a two wheeler loan company for a far too long period uh, which itself i think you know, we could have probably brought in those changes earlier but now we have gone all out we have decided that we are doing it we have do, already the entire used car team has been set across the country LCV we are adding up as a uh, new vertical because we see a lot of uh, business potential there within our customer segment. So once that also comes full fledged, or we'll have the firing on all the four cylinders. So uh, going forward, things uh, will look very positive, and it's already started looking positive. Okay. So so I mean third quarter 600 crores of disbursement, 300 crores of collection. Do you expect the same thing for fourth quarter as well? I mean 600 and two 300. the fourth quarter there is no uh, festive season or anything to uh, do that but i am banking on by that time we will have reached the productivity of closer to 50 which will uh, give me that growth uh-huh. so this time while i am still building on my productivity i have a advantage of that festive season boom which will come in which already we saw some parts uh, in uh, october and uh, november we are expecting to be really big all the dealers that we have spoken to are very very gung ho about it but by q4 the existing team would have reached that productivity level of closer to 15 plus we are also adding partnerships so that will help us up in that moment so uh, so so what is our disbursement and collection target for fourth quarter fourth quarter we will be uh, disbursing closer to 500 crores 500 to 600 crores anywhere between 500 and 600 and 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 about collection it will be the same range sir uh, 300 to 350 crores 300 to 350 crores collection okay and and what is our arc target i mean you said that we might look at uh, fresh arc for remaining 40% of em in the second half so what is our arc target uh, for second half is that something that we have set for ourselves No, 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 no. See, I'll I'll say that again. See, basis on the you know what is the feedback that that will receive from the bank or PSU that you that you need to further you know bring down your NPAs and all. Then then we will take a call. Otherwise, we will not take a call or bring uh, another ARC. Okay. And this. So so, so in case we do any uh, further ARC, then our uh, like two hundred three hundred crore ARC is at all. No, 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 no. The the remaining call is the remaining call is somewhere around one sixty odd crores. Okay. Okay. So, so if at all we decide that we we, we do this 160 crores uh, ARC as well, so our EM will slip away to 2000 crores. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 160. True, true, true. And and in the last con call, I think we had we we had said that we'll grow by about 15-20 percent per growth on a YOI basis in ROI of four and a half to five yeah. percent in FY24 as a year, as a as a as yeah. a year as a whole. So, how do we change uh-huh. that? No, 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 no. So, in in terms of that, if we remove that, you know, reversal of impairment itself. 
mm-hmm. i will stick on to the same number no uh, so so that's one off right i mean we have to exclude that number ha so i'm i'm i'm, I'm uh, excluding it itself so excluding that we are targeting 15 20% pad growth yeah 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 okay no, so because pad. if i exclude that my pad number this quarter would be close to about 15 16 crores so first half is about 30 crores sir right? sir sir that's that's what i i have explained you know that pad number that you are seeing is 15 16 crores is basically 25 crores because the component of impairment has been transferred to the exceptional item there that's an 8 9 cr of component that 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 we have transferred from you know upper layer to the excess, uh, to to, uh, to the exceptional item that's the reason you know you are, you are saying you know pat on a lower side okay if we exclude that if you if you compare apple to apple without having without having an arc that yes the then yes you know company was having a profit of 26 crore in this quarter as well mm-hmm. okay the only thing is that uh, that impairment of 8 9 cr on the normal co portfolio has taken the cap of the impairment reversal as an exceptional item mm-hmm. okay yeah okay i, I got it so are you also 4 and 1/2 to 5% we we maintain true 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 i think yeah that's it from my side all the very best thank you so much yeah. Yeah. and also to add to this i think we are not too much fixated on the eu and as of now we are saying we are doing the right things for the company so in terms of increasing disbursement increasing productivity bringing npa down so so this there's been a uh, you know slight difference in what we had told about the aum from uh, because of this arc so whether the second arc will happen or not that is something which we are taking a call on but overall we are we will continue to do what is right for the company for its growth that's more important okay and that's fair enough thank you thank you very much a reminder to all the participants you may press star and one to ask a question The next question is from the line of Pankit Shah from Dinero Wealth. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hi sir. Good morning. Hey Pankit. Hi. Yeah. So uh, actually, can you throw some uh, more light on uh, the new model which you talked about with uh, the parent and uh, how how the product, which products are going to be there? Are these products exclusive to Mutu Capital? And uh, how how the NPA is going to work there? okay so i'll take that question so we are getting into a business correspondent model with our uh, flagship company food team call the objective is that they are uh, uh, they have a huge branch network of 4000 plus uh, branches currently uh, we are doing uh, about 1500 to 2000 vehicles per month from that network alone uh, one of the reasons that we identified uh was that like in any branch model even it's a branch banking model for a bank uh, there are multiple products that we have to sell so mutu pincorp branches also distribute about 20 25 products on different uh, not mcsl but different company products third party products etc so the amount of focus that they were getting on two wheeler as a product had come down okay so uh, the uh, we worked out the management of both the company sat down on the drawing board and worked out on bringing back that focus and we arrived at the fact that whatever is actually going to contribute to their profit is is what is going to drive them so we said okay let us make them a partner in this whole thing and not just a uh, one time payout model we make them a partner because there are multiple uh, Uh, times when they when they become a partner, what happens? They cater to the entire life cycle, which means the sum of option for a gold loan is household a uh, two wheeler loan, and from there he continues to since he is a neighborhood uh, customer, he continues to come walk into Mutu Incorp and start paying the EMI every month. Every time he walks in, there is a cross-sell opportunity. Till the time that an NOC is issued, NOC is also getting issued from the this thing. and in the whole process is the involvement of the branch is so much we share a part of the aum so he the customer also the uh, branch always looks at what is my aum is it going up or is it going down otherwise he would have forced the loan and he would forget about it he has nothing more to do with it he has taken a one time payout now he will continue to monitor the book he is responsible for collecting also 
Okay. okay. So he is the so branch manager. So there are four thousand people tracking the AUM against uh, somebody who is managing third party business in FinCorp who is just tracking disbursement on a month on month basis. That is the change that we are bringing. We are change, bringing the change in that outlook. So that is going to trigger the next level of growth for this channel because it's our own internal channel. Okay. And the AUM is you said uh, at the FinCorp level, uh, but uh, complete AUM would be recorded for uh, Mutual Capital, right? And complete AUM will be booked on our books, but they will be shown a shadow AUM based on which they will get the income. Okay. Today, if they disburse an eighty thousand loan. They get whatever percentage on their eighty thousand loan as a one-time fee. That's all. Here, the AUM will keep building as they do more and more loan. That shadow AUM will be so a branch manager can see that today my AUM on account of two-year loan is so and so, and therefore I will get a recurring income on that. It will become an annuity income for him as against the one-time rental right. income that he is getting now. Right, right. So, so, so the profit share also would be throughout the life cycle of the program. Yes, yes. Uh, and uh, these uh, do we uh, do we also source uh, used four wheelers and LCV from different? We will source all all our the products through branches because see, Mutu uh, Finco branch is like a neighborhood uh, bank for many customers. So in fact, we had run a campaign to uh, you know we we saw that about forty percent of our collections were happening in cash, and only sixty percent right. were coming through NAS. So we thought that okay, we can save a lot of money by converting these customers into uh, Nash mode, etc., etc. And we run a campaign. And when we started calling the customers, we understood that these customers are saying, no, no, if I have to pay through Nash, I have to go to the bank and uh, pay. Which bank is farther away from me? But you are Mutu Finco branch is next door. I can go and pay there. So we understood that they are paying because of their affinity towards that branch and that branch. And which is what we are trying to now tackle now through this model. Oh, okay, got it. And uh, these uh, used four wheelers, LCVs, uh, these products are exclusive to Mutur Capital within the group company. Ha uh, ha! Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we, none of the companies do competing lines of businesses. All the four LBFCs that we have under NPG are in two distinct businesses. We don't compete with each other. Okay. And so uh, automobile is only the one of Mutur Capital Services. Sorry. Automobile entire automobile business is the forte of Mutur Capital Services alone. Okay. Okay. And does personal loan come into our picture? Yes. For for uh, we have two wheeler uh, car new and used. Well, new we will not be uh, very aggressive on because of the rate. LCV new and used and personal loan. On the lending side. Okay. okay. So probably, uh, say three years, five years down the line, uh, uh, is there any particular target that we have set for used cars, uh, LCV, personal loans? Probably the opportunity size is much much bigger as compared to a two wheeler. Ah, where we are there currently. Our vision, our vision, our chairman's vision is the 10,004 company, the next uh, four odd years of which. Uh, approximately 4,000 crore will be the two-wheeler loan book. Uh, 3,000, 3,000 crore will be the used car and uh, LCD book. Okay. Okay. And balance 1,000 can be a personal loan. Yeah, personal loan and all. Okay. 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 Great. Yeah. And uh, I think last thing, if you can throw some light on the uh, competitive intensity. We have been seeing that the competitors like say Shriram or the other financial arms of uh, the OEMs have been growing consistently, and especially they have managed also with uh, with the dealership. So, uh, with regards to two wheeler, how should we see that? We are also growing. So, uh, we are our percentage in the overall industry is around two percent. But if you look at only the places where we operate out of, we are around seven percent. And this seven percent has gone up from April it was five percent, now it is seven percent, and we are growing. So it is only a function of how aggressive you are out there in the market, and uh, you can automatically increase your share. So you have to be present. That's all. You have to be present. You have to be visible. You have to be competing. That's all. In between, we had pulled back, and that's why we lost share. 
just retaining all this. Okay, okay. So just being present and uh, being competitive itself will uh, lead to growth. Yes. Okay. In fact, last thing, if you can repeat the uh, 10,000 crore mark which you said, what is the timeline and uh, is there any roadway for that? Um, be... It's a say, three to four year horizon. Hmm. Okay. So the first thing that we have done is to uh, hive out all these uh, uh, units as SDUs with a independent business head, credit head, uh, collection, operations, everything. So that will happen uh, by April, uh, March or April of this year. Uh, April of next year, we will have put up this entire structure in place. So what we have already done is hive out the sales fee. And gradually we will add credit and uh, uh, collection and operation. So by end of next year, we should have this complete independent for SBUs uh, running these businesses. Okay. So we are hiring the best people from the market for this and making them run this show. Sure, sure. And I assume that also what we have done, people. also we are do doing as a part of our expansion is that earlier we were, you know, saying that, okay, since we are based out of Kuchin, headquartered in Kuchin, uh, we will, uh, everybody has to sit here, etc. Et so that was bringing some amount of uh, limitation for us because you don't get all that talent in Kuchin. So now we have decided that all businesses would be based out of different cities. For instance, uh, LCV is a big one. All the big players like uh, Sriram, Chola, Sundaram, all of them are based out of Chennai. So we'll have that business based out of Chennai. Two wheeler we will have it based out of Delhi because uh, the person whom we have identified is out of Delhi and he will be able to manage that. So we we, we are now becoming uh, open to that. So for horses for courses, that's what we are like uh, going forward. Okay. Okay. And uh, what I assume is that last part of the growth from say 2000 crore to 10,000 crore, five years, that's like a 5x. AUM growth, majority of it will come from those Incorp branches. A good percentage will come from uh, Mudur's Incorp branches. In fact, it varies on product wise. So, on that also, we have a roadmap. So, on some products, Incorp will be able to contribute more than some other products. So, the plan, the blueprint that we have made has a channel wise uh, contribution. That is projected, and that's what we will be writing. So, how much of it will come from coal ending? How much will be through our own team? How much will be dealer DSA? How much will be digital sales? We are also putting up a digital sales uh, unit. We are getting into partnerships with few marketplaces uh, like Bajaj Marketplace, Sarasa, to be present on their site. So, one, it will generate leads and business, and two, it will help us catch more eyeballs. So, so there's a few of things that we are doing. Uh, to leave this number. So there is a plan for all these. Okay, okay. Great, great. Thank you so much and all the best. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will take this as the last uh, question for the day. I now hand over the conference to Shweta Daptarwar for the closing comments. Please go ahead. Thank you. On behalf of Ilara Capital, we thank the management of Muthut Capital to give us the opportunity to host the earnings call. Thank you, team. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sheta. Thank you, all the participants. Thank you. Thank you so much. Feeling looking Thank forward you. to your support, continued support going forward in our journey. Thank you.